Who here paints in watercolour? Can you put your hands up and then I'll know who I'm talking to. The two problems in watercolour, getting started and then stopping. <laughs> How many of you have wrecked a painting by overworking it? Well, my problem today is going to be getting finished because I've already started. So I wonder if we could have the painting there. Now, the reason I've done that is I want to finish this. That's what I'm going to be working with. Now, I know what you're thinking. You want to know what this looked like earlier because I've already done work on it. Yeah? I can see a few heads nodding. Well, I've got one. Here. This is what it looked like earlier. <laughs> In fact, there's one I didn't do earlier. So, I'm just going to run through what I've done. I've done a lot of masking in this zone here. And I've used these tools. This is a little white nylon brush with a nice point. It's very cheap. That's the main thing because you're going to wreck them. I've used this nib pen here. And you dip that in the masking fluid and then what happens, a great big blob falls off the nib and spoils your painting. So you have to live with that. And I've used one of these. This is a very rough cheap hog hair brush from a bargain basement store, but you look quite well healed. Do you have bargain basement <laughs> stores here? Yeah, right. So, so here's one I wrecked earlier. And I've, uh, I've, I, well, I use them in a wood stove. I burn them. It's, it's, it's so impossible to clean, but they last quite a while in their wrecked state. So I'm going to demonstrate these tools with another layer of masking. So what I've done here is masked all of these broken twigs, sticks and leaves here. You'll have to take my word for it that they're there. I've masked the whites of the river. This is some kind of very fine weed. And when I, I've, I shot past this river a few weeks ago in my car and it was just amazing. So I, I just pulled over and took about 30 or 40 photographs. And I just love this white effect on the river. It's actually weed. And this was early spring. And then when I did that, after I'd masked the river with this tool here on screen there. I'm going to put it on a dark background so you can see it. That's what I masked the river with, one of those. Then this, I put azo green on here. This is M. Graham azo green. It's a light yellowy green. I've brushed it all over. I spattered some water on it, and then I spattered and brushed paint in there. So that's that bit done. Now here, normally, for this, I stippled masking fluid with one of these brushes. I'm going to put that against the dark background so you can see it. I stippled masking fluid on, like that. And this creates the rough, broken leaf texture. Then I brush twigs and leaves and fine lines and thick lines all over it. Then I gave it a layer of what you, normally you might use burnt sienna. But I've used these two colours here. Nickel quinacridone gold and quinacridone rose. And they're actually uh, M. Graham, American, fantastic colours. But they're all good. I use all of different makes. And my painting, my rock pool painting, the big one, is done with three colours. Just these two and cobalt blue. I also use some phthalo blue in places and some Payne's grey for darkness. But I can make something just like burnt sienna with these and it's incredibly vibrant and it's different. And I put some cobalt blue to calm it down. And when I brush that over there, very roughly, I masked over it. So now we're going to do the next stage. I put another layer of... In fact, no, I haven't done another layer. You're going to see me do that. So I'm, you're going to actually see me do the masking, so you're, you're not going to miss a thing. Every single thing I've done so far, you're going to see done. And I really want to finish the picture. 
Uh, but what motivates me is I, I like pretty pictures. So I, I just like to have a nice picture at the end of it. So now, let's see how this shows. Brilliant. I've dis we've discovered that I've worked with Gary here since 2001. And it's absolutely brilliant to see him again. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he started at 11. <laughs> so now, I'm just putting a few more sticks and twigs over this painted zone here. So I've got a layer of sticks and twigs. I've got a layer of masked texture, because it's overall texture. I want to get the overall feel of it. And now I'm putting another layer over the top of the paint that I've put on. The, it would be burnt sienna, but I actually used quinacridone gold, quinacridone rose. I'm always looking for different ways of mixing colours because I get bored. You know, I'm, I'm like someone in a petrol station. I'm thinking, oh, do I want a Mars bar or a Twix? I don't know. And with colour, I'm like that. I just want to try different colours. So... I've done that. I'm going to get the small brush, uh, the small pen, the one that drops horrible blobs, very scratchy. And I'm going to put a few more twigs quickly as I can. A few leaves. You can do leaves by dumping the thing on top like that. You can use any implement to get shapes. It keeps the mannered human hand out of it. Sometimes I cut up little jagged bits of paper. I've even dabbed with kitchen roll, roughed up kitchen roll, dab masking with kitchen roll. Not doing that here, though. I haven't got time. Just to get a little bit more detail on there, and that will do. So finally, for the masking, I'm going to get this brush here. I'm going to show it again over a dark background so you can see it. I'm going to rough it up like that, splay it out. Apparently, David Shepard, you, you've all heard of David Shepard, haven't you? We all love David Shepard. And uh, he used to destroy these. Dayla Rowney. Hi, hello. I think that... I'm yeah, it's a good idea. But they'll, they'll have a think about that now. Because I'm all right. I got, I got enough light here. Now he's, he's. That, that's a brilliant idea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I'm going to just gently dab this onto the painting, this brush here. Dab, like that, pick up, rotate, dab, pick up, rotate, dab. The reason for picking it up, rotating it and dabbing is if you don't, you'll get a whole bunch of shapes that are identical. And... It looks a bit strange. It, it's not con so convincing. So I want lots of different shapes. I, I once got a load of... I got a cheap sponge and it just ripped it up into so many pieces and I dabbed with a different piece every time. Otherwise you get all the same shapes again. So just going to finish this off and then we're going to attack the woodland, the background, and I call it the wallpaper. The background is a texture, and it's the wallpaper. And the handwriting is the trees. So we'll, that's all the darks and the shadows. So we start with the wallpaper, the background, by creating this texture. Then we do the handwriting, and that says what it is. So I'm going to... I don't want to put that in my water, so I'm just going to leave that there. Just a hint here, plastic masking fluid bottle is in another pot so it doesn't fall over. If it falls up, well, it won't fall over, but even if it did, it's in there. But everybody is going to knock one of those over sooner or later. There's no question about if, it's just when. You can't get it out of your clothes. 
I'm going to use some of this as well. Uh, you'll be very interested to know this is on offer at Tesco. <laughs> so the next thing is the background. And I'm going to create a stencil by ripping it. And I get a nice rough edge there. The river curves away into the distance and goes slightly higher. So I'm going to do a little short bit there. That'll do. I've got my tape here. I'm going to tape that together. Have a look at the picture. I'm going to rip the stencils, the paper up to create a few different stencils. And then I'm going to build up a stenciled background shape, which is going to define the edge of the woodland. And it's just going to be very rough. That'll do. There. Need another bit. I find, I find um, bank statements and letters from the revenue very good, you know, for, for this. Dear Mr. Dowden, once again, we find... There's my stencil. Yes. Brilliant question. Thanks for ans asking. It's arches, 300 pounds, rough. French paper, arch, wonderful. Although it's French, I'd describe it as the Volkswagen Golf of paper. <laughs> so we all know what that means. Now I'm going to start spattering. It'll give a very natural texture to the background. And I've got myself some Hooker's Green. This is M. Graham Hooker's Green. I've got Winsor & Newton Hooker's Green, which is very nice. But this M. Graham Hooker's Green and also Sap Green, which have the same derivative pigments, will give you a perfect foliage green out of the tube. I mean, there are 750,000 different greens, they reckon. But this one won't cause you any problems for a tree colour or grass or something like that. It looks rather dull, but once it's on the paper and contrasted with darks, it gets very bright. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on. This is the spatter technique. Get a tape. I actually sprained my wrist the other day, but it's all right. Um, the wonders of Neurofen. So I'm going to use a tape to bang it against, but it's a good idea to bang it against the tape uh, because you can hurt your hand by, by repeatedly doing it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bang this brush against the tape. It's got a very good point on it. This is actually a, a number 12 top quality uh, sable fibre, equivalent of Winsor & Newton Series 7. But it's, it's not that expensive because... There, there are various makers who, who make very good versions of these. So this one happens to be Rosemary & Co. Now, I can spatter lots and lots of tiny little droplets of water. And that's what I'm doing. They're not going to go anywhere else. The stencil's going to protect the paper. I don't know how far. I might try doing the whole lot in one go. So get the right the way across. And I'll get myself a nice convincing woodland texture. Unfortunately, there's some great synthetic brushes around, but this doesn't work at all with synthetic. They tend to spatter a fine mist. Now, I'm going to get the hookers green, and we're going to spatter that. So, tape. Get a real good point on the brush. So I'm fashioning a point on the brush. This is a, a number 10. Sable, slightly smaller. And now we're just going to spatter, spatter colour. And what that's doing is it's, it's forming blobs. Some of it's going on the paper dry. Some of it's merging and blending. And some of it's following the existing spatter pattern. So you can very rapidly get an extremely complex pattern. 
and I use a ton of paint as well. This is the difficult bit, actually. The easy bit is the water, and I want to get to that so we can see the water. Uh, here, I think it's looking a bit soft focus, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut to the chase and go wet into wet. Wet into wet just means you wet the paper, put the paint on. Uh, uh, I know most of you knew that, but sometimes it, we use this incomprehensible language that nobody else understands. It's a coat of paint. It's a glaze. But, uh, I just put a coat of paint on. There we go. So we've got some more colour on there. And now I'm going to... I've got a, a remarkable light patch up here. I want to retain most of that if I can. I'm spattering paint spattering water. Once I can get this done, this is a major hurdle over. Putting the darks on is easy. This is, this is the, the bit that takes the time, the background. I generally do the background of a painting first and work forwards. And, and I, do you ever think, oh, you, you sit and look at a painting and go, oh, where do I start? What do I do? I, I, I'm in panic. Do you, do you know what to do about that? Oh, well, if you do, come and tell me afterwards. <laughs> if it all does go wrong, I, I do find it one thing very, very helpful. Um, Ferrero Rocha. <laughs> all right, so now we've got a bit of a texture into the background. And I'm going to take the stencil away. Sometimes paint gathers along the stencil. That won't be a problem. Now, I want to save that for the Royal Academy Summer Open next year. <laughs> we'll come into the foreground. It's not really foreground, is it? It's the mid-distance. And I'm going to brush along this edge, just touching it in places and letting it break through, but nothing too obvious, just quite gentle. And then we're going to wet this area. It's a mixture of brush strokes of totally wet paper, of dry paper. And I'm just going to start to put some green into there. I need a little bit more green. I use a ton of paint. I use so much paint. So we get these lovely soft focus, shadowy streaks. Right, enough of that. And let's get into this foreground here. Let's start with this. Now, I kind of like it. I think I'd like a bit of a brighter green, especially for some of this foreground grass. I'm going to get out the. See if I've got my Winsor Newton green there. I haven't. I've got Viridian, that might do it. I was so sure I wouldn't use it, I, I didn't pack it, but I have got some phthalo green. You've got to be really careful with this. I mean, one tube of this in the local reservoir and the whole of the West Midlands is drinking green water for the next week. So, Shminka, they stick. Yeah, I've got it off. How do you unstick lids? Hot water. Yeah, that'll get anything. Works for builders, paint, tins, all sorts of stuff. Um, hot water will always get it undone. Well done. I'm just going to get another palette out because I don't want this phthalo green anywhere near my palette. So that's the phthalo green. Secret of mixing a green. Glad I've done this actually. I need a brighter green so I can show we I can show us all how to do this or one method that works. Now I learned a lot from the absolute maestro painter called Richard Thorne, West Country artist. Paints like an angel. Didn't need to be famous. He'd stick his paintings up and people would just buy them around the West Country. 
incredible painter. I was completely blown away by his work back in 1987. And uh, this was one of the colours he told me about, cadmium lemon. Um, I doubt if he remembers that, but it's very versatile, powerful yellow. Now, watch this. Don't, you, you make a green by adding green to yellow. Don't add yellow to green. You'll never turn green yellow. You can turn yellow green just by showing it a bit of green. There we go. That's green. Tiny bit more. Then we'll get some of our brown to calm it down a bit. And that's instant, credible green. It, you'll see when you look at the painting off the monitor as well. This is a brilliant setup. It's working really well. Uh, the, the colors will be even brighter when I pick up the painting at the end. So now, let's get this color on. Anyone know the time? Uh, I need a time. Past. 20 past. So now I'm just putting some brighter green in. I can be very, very untidy because any mistakes, anything, any roughness, it's just going to be hidden. But when the darks go on, it's going to disappear. So let's just get that in ASAP. And the fantastic advantage of demonstrating with artists is it forces them to loosen up and innovate. It really improves our work. And that we learn from our audiences. I'm learning from you. I will learn from you. I'll be disappointed if, when I go, I haven't learned something. And uh, it drives us to do better painting. So I, I've always taken risks with, with demos. Today I've played it safe by getting it all done. Now I'll spatter a little bit more on. It needs so much colour. I'm building the colour up, getting it much stronger than I think it should be. Even, even I, I know it should be stronger, but I still can't believe it when I, when I look at it. So I have to tell myself, no, I have to do it stronger than I think. Here we go. So just getting the strength into the colour. And next thing will be to dry it and go in with the darks. The bulk of the work is going to be on this. Have a bit of a tidy up. I don't know if you find this, but what I do is I, I build a lovely scale model of Manhattan all around the painting, and it marches in until I can't move. And then I'll have some rubbish brush marks because as I'm sweeping along, the brush has got to take off to <laughs> avoid a you know an imitation block of flats here, my brushes or something. So part of painting is have a bit of a clear up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm just going to have to tidy up again. I don't know why the palettes do this. They march toward the painting. Right. Hairdryer, my favourite instrument. Windsor and Newton. Sometimes I, I have little stories I tell when I'm drying paint because what's the most boring thing in the world? Watching paint dry. So if you're painting out of doors, people come up and they say, my aunt Rosemary's a watercolour painter. Do you know her? Or the, the best one, have you been painting all your life? Not yet. Now, one way of... I've got a dampness gauge here. Have you seen one of those? A dampness gauge. You know what it's like trying to draw on wet paper? So you just do a couple of little lines. OK, I can feel that's a bit damp. So I'm going to hit that area. This is dry over here. So I'm, I'm hitting that, right? OK, that's... You never notice the pencil marks. In fact, what I'll do is I'll pencil in the trees a bit more boldly while I'm about it. 
There we go. And that will tell you the painting's bone dry. Now let's just tape this down and I'll just start to sketch in some of the trees I'm going to have to put in in a minute. Just looking for where they are, just taking the chance to do this. I want to get it absolutely bone dry. It, you always spoil your painting. I always tend to feel a bit impatient and want to get on and that just spoils it. So it's boring being patient, but um, and I have a con short concentration span. Obviously, I like pictures. I don't like reading much instructions on things. Okay, now we're going to go for the darks. So I get my stencil, put that back there, blank off the foreground. So I'm going to do the background the background texture, then I'm going to do the foreground. So this is the dark texture. I'm going to use Payne's Grey, and I'm mixing it with my Hooker's Green. So I've got Payne's Grey and Hooker's Green, and that's going to get me a nice dark. So I'll start to mix that up. Let's mix it up with this brush full of the Cadmium Lemon, because that's going to add a bit of a green element. I want this to be quite strong. In fact, one, way you could, one thing you could call this green is invisible green. It looks black until it's thinned out in a wash. So Hooker's green or Thalo green and Payne's grey. And with Thalo, I'll add a bit of brown so it's not an, a, a really electric green. Right, there we go. Now I'm just going to show you the colour. So that's... That's the colour. Uh, take me word for it, it's dark green. But I can barely see that it's green. Now we're going to spatter that on using the same technique we did before. So here goes nothing. Now I'm spattering, I'm getting those little hard shapes that I want that are going to produce not the leaves, what this is going to do is give you the shadow pattern between the leaves. If you spatter wet on dry, the dry paper wet spatters, you'll get leaves. If you spatter water and then you spatter paint, the water will fill all the gaps and form a labyrinth of channels between all the spatters and it will produce the dark shapes around the leaves. That's why I do it. It's a really useful technique. Let's do it on the tape. I'm doing it on the tape. I, I, I recommend doing it on the tape because you can hurt your hand and, and then you'll come and sue me. Or somebody will. I'm sure you won't. You, you seem much, new, much too nice. Now, here we go. Spatter. Spattering darks. This is uh, number 10, Rosemary Sable, series 99. I think the SAA do some great brushes. Uh, I've used the Sables before in the past. So spattering away. You can go back and spatter water. That's what I'm going to do. I see you're all far enough away from me as well. The dress code for the front row is Mac, wellies and an umbrella. So I'm alternating now between spattering the paint and spattering water. It's amazing how much control you've got. It might seem a bit scary, but we all do one thing that is astonishing when you think of the ability, or a lot of us do, the, the ability required. But we all do it. It's a lot of hassle, um, but we, most of us seem to get there in the end. 
And I'm just thinking of driving a car. You have to learn to drive a car. Most of us have to learn to change gear, not to stall, do a hill start, all that. This is much easier than all of that. So don't, don't feel it's, it's clever and you can't do it. What you do need to remember is a lot of ladies here put a bag over your husband when you're spattering a big paper bag or protect the walls with something. Because this goes everywhere. And if you do spat, yep. 25 minutes left. 25, that's fantastic. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Now, Gary knows what I'm like. I, I go off track. We nearly finished this background spatter. But I'm, I'm hurrying up a little bit. There we go. That's the, that's the background done. Incredibly dark, but it'll dry. It'll dry lighter. Just joining it up a little bit in places. So I'm spattering over it now, just to join it up. We'll be ready to put on the trees. Take the stencil away. That's that bit. I use a mirror just to so I can actually see what's going on. The one person who doesn't know what's going on is the artist. So I, t I tend to see what I want to see. But this is really helpful. It gives me a another image. It feeds another image into the visual mind and it tells me immediately if there's any problems. And it's brilliant at spotting creeping errors or perspective errors. But that's not too bad. That's OK. So now I need to get on with this lot here in the foreground. And uh, first I think I'm going to finish off this zone here. What I'm doing is I'm kind of feathering water on. I'm crisscross brushing water. And I'm just going to go along the base of the river, the river bank, with a line like that. And now I'm going to use the edge of the brush, really strong paint, and just put in the little river bank shadows they're diagonal or vertical marks, and they just go up like that. Now we'll put in some shadow. We've got some shadow and some distant shadow. Getting more color, more, more, more all the time. Going to put a bit of uh, phthalo green in there. Can't find it. Use Viridian. Oh, there's the phthalo. I always move that away from my kit. There we go. Bit of phthalo. Whoa, that's the lid. You give a slightly brighter green and a stronger dark as well. Now, a little bit of brown. Intensify the colour and come into the foreground. So now I need to just get masses, broad masses of colour. Uh, so I'm going to brush through here with water, through this zone with water. And I'm going to try and do simple shadow pattern to start to bring out the basic shapes of things. More colour. I'm going to get much more colour mixed. Payne's grey. There's some sap green here. It's quite similar to the azo green. Um, quite similar rather to the hooker's green, not the azo green. Uh, M. Graham again. So it's, I've got Winsor & Newton's sap green. The last painting I did was a canal scene. You can see it, it looks like a river, but it's a canal. And uh, 
I used every possible green imaginable. So although the, the big wadi scene, the rock pool scene, that had just three, three basic colours and a total of five, the other, the canal scene, which I did last month actually, it's got more like 30 colours in it, different greens from tubes. So that was an unlimited palette. Right, let's just get this colour on. I'm wetting it again just so I can get, it, get the soft focus shadow pattern in. Now, where is that? Always ask myself questions. Where is that shadow? There we go. Useful hint is to have a drawing on tracing. I draw on tracing first. You can put it back over to find anything, but I haven't needed to do that. But I thought I'd show you because that's a very useful little hint. So now we're going to dive all over it with the dark paint. Here goes. Stick that in there, and away we go. Really strong, strong, strong colour. Water, soften with water in places. Two pots, one for dirty water, and the pot sits inside a pot, the clean water's outside. It's a big pot inside a paint kettle. So the original pot had something like tile grout for the bathroom. I must get around to doing the bathroom tile sometime. Right, let's get really all of this defined strongly. There we go. The painting is literally weaved together with darks. I'm going to try and take aim and get, a, get some water into that zone there. In fact, you can spatter all over it. Spattering water all over it sometimes is a really quick way of blending it and bedding it in. The more dark you get into a painting, the more it will bring out the light, the more it will contrast the light. Now I need to finish off this foreground totally. Uh, so I'm going to put in a whole crisscross pattern of darks, dry brushing and brushing, dry brushing, getting in the, the dark shadow mass in the twig zone. And I can hurry things up by spattering colour in. I'm not bothering with a stencil, I'm in a hurry. Uh, so some of it will go in the river. I want to get to the river, I want you to see the river. I really want you to see the river. But you, you've got Patricia Guzman this afternoon. I don't want to take one second away from her preparation time and the turnaround between. You really do need to see her and, and what she's doing and what her work is saying. I know you absolutely love it. And this isn't just the first time in Britain, it's the first time in Europe for her. But she's internationally famous and respected. She's respected throughout China. I took a photograph of Chinese masters in awe around her work, and pointing at it and photographing it. So that's my motive. I need to get this done. Right, that's done, more or less. Looks a mess. That's fantastic. It's just what I want. 15 minutes. Let's put some trees in. With sound effects. There we go. Dry brush.
This one is a two-hour demo. So this is a bit of a trick. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it really is pushing it. But I'm hoping to get all the trees in now. And it might... Oh, yeah. Now, there's a, thanks for checking with that, Gary. The, the big rock pool painting took me a month. I do oil painting. I never publish those because they're private clients. Um, and they can take me six months. And, but the big rock pool took me a solid month. Um, and the, the canal scene took me three weeks. I just do one piece at a time. One of my favorite sayings, one piece at a time, like Johnny Cash's car. Put your hand up if you understood that. Yes. Brilliant. He nicked a car. It took him 13 years. The bits didn't go together quite. He had a, one year with a tail fin. You remember those cars? So Johnny Cash's car, you do it one piece at a time. So now I need to get more paint squeezed out. A killer of paintings, not mixing enough paint. I need a shortcut. I want to add brown. I don't want to mix it. I'm just going to grab some burnt sienna. So let's just put that tree in a bit better. So now I've got black and brown for these nearby trees. And nice and thick. I'm just doing this tree in stripes because then I can hopefully get some leaves going across it. Normally I'd mask or spatter, but run out of time for that. I want to get the water in. We've got that done. More brown, more, 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 more paint all the time. That's what this is about. And then it's the water. Here's the near tr nearby tree. few distant trees. And do that across it. That's the trees done, more or less. I'm just going to dry brush and darken. And there's a load of masking to be rubbed off as well. Dry brush, dry brush, that's dry brush. Now we do the water. might need to do something in there, but I'll leave that. It's quite nice. There's so much stuff we ruin by over, overworking it. It's one thing I've learned from some of these fantastic international painters, and Pascalino yesterday is no exception, the distress they like to put in their work. You're going to see another painter if you're around, Michal Yashevich, absolutely wonderful painter, full of distress in the work. He so said, I like some distress in my painting. I said, I am distressed about my painting. There we go. So now we do the water. So just to save time, put these pallets away and get another pallet out. Uh, shunt this one up here. Phthalo blue. Saves time. A lot of M. Graham paint here. One of the things about M. Graham is it's very sticky and it never quite dries out or hardens. It doesn't harden in the tubes. You seem to be able to keep it for years. Right, step one with the river. Upside down sky in the foreground. Get a lot of water on it. How long have I got, Gary? Uh, ten minutes. Oh, goodness sake. <laughs> what am I going to do for the last five minutes? So I'm brushing, brushing, brushing water on. Now it's going to be the hairdryer. I don't want the colour to go right the way up. I, I need s some whiteness in, in the water. Having said that, I'm going to take it about there and then dry it. So now we put the very muddy, dirty, dirty water. I mean, it's a canal. You ever fallen in one of those? 
There's only one thing missing from this canal. Can you tell me what it is? Yes. <laughs> to any internationals here, you, you've just struck a vein of British humour. Now we just try to get it blacker. It's, it's just black as anything. And what we do now is just brush it uphill like that, like that. There. Done. That's the first pit. That's the upside down sky. Now we've got to dry the thing for England. How good is this hairdryer? Has anyone got a, one of those things of stripping paint off a wall? Put that away. I'll tell you what, would somebody like to come up and hold the hairdryer for me and just dry that? Any professional hairdryer operators here? Any hairdressers here? You're nailed. <laughs> there you are. It's a cut and oh, you beat Lindsay. I knew you were a hairdresser all along. He's a wolf supporter, so for goodness sake, don't let that out on the terraces. Now, uh, this is a very useful colour. Naples yellow. That's it, keep it all round there. And it doesn't matter if it's a total mess. My painting is anyway. Um, so we've got Naples yellow there. And I'm going to use this like a... a, a um, what's that stuff? Corn flour. It's a kind of stock. So let's put that in, in shot. There. Thanks, Lindsay. I really appreciate this. So what we're getting is a murky, muddy river colour. What colour is that? It's mud. Oh, I get that anyway. <laughs> I hear you say. Well, it'll never look muddy if, you, if you've got plenty of colour. It just needs plenty of colour. How are we doing? Try the dampness gauge. It's nearly there. And so is the painting. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And thank you for volunteering over there. <laughs> oh, it's a funny one, that. Especially designed to give you RSI. Right, now I'm brushing vertically downhill. Um, and I've, I've, this is an absolute first for me. After many years of working with Gary Templeman, this is the first time that I haven't got my head in the shot yet. I was going to stick a picture on the back of my head, like this. So if I get my head in shot, it's A, you've got something more interesting to look at, and B, you don't see my ball patch. Now I've just got to do one more little bit of drying there, along that edge. Once that's done, I got a little cauliflower there, where I left it slightly down. That wasn't Lindsay's fault, because I told him to stop. Whew. Right, now we're going to get the thing done. This is brush, 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 down. Going down. The faster you do water, the happier it'll be. So now we brush vertical. Blurred and vertical equals wet. I've got lots of dirty, dark paint here, so that's what I need. And we're just going to come into the foreground here, get that on. Now we've got a ton of dark, murky paint, so we're going to go, go with that. Lots of dark going in. We've got a ton of dark on the palette still. Oh, we need lots and lots of dark up here. Now we've got, I've got to have a quick rubbing session to get the masking fluid off, so I've got to dry this again. Get the paint on. Can you see the palette on there? He'll, he'll do a palette shot. He can do a palette shot. It's very clever. Now, for how long? Ah, oh, we're going to be all right. We're going to be okay. Oh, 
Right, I put a bit of brown in as well. Uh, get that out of the way. I need to put my hand there. So now we're going to do this. And now what I'm going to do is water feathering. We drag water down like that and across and all over really. And then we put the paint into it. So... I need to exercise some care here. Murky brown again, but a bit paler. So this is the leaf canopy, the bud mass canopy. And that's that. So I need the soft focus edge. I'm doing that with a bit of dry brush. Now we need to go in with really rich, thick, dark paint and get it finished. I'm going to check it in the mirror. And once it's dry, uh, that's the moment at which we're going to be really running the wire, getting the masking off. So just having a, a look at that. What else do I need? I need another brush. I've got the dark on this brush. I need more, more, more colour in there. There they are, more colour, more, more colour, more, more, all the time. I need to do something up there to join the river to the distance. There we go. I've got that. I notice a couple of missing trees. I'm going to stick those in. And then we're going to put in the darks into the river and we're sorted. So here goes the darks in the river. Now sometimes you can put a little bit of gum arabic in, in and that will give you the softness you need. So this is soft focus. Soft focus darks. Really, really, really dark. I need more Payne's Grey to overpower it. So it's nearly, nearly finished. Little vertical lines below the river. Strong darks in here. And now we're going to do the break zone. Mass zone, break zone. It's a way of thinking about reflections. There's a mass zone here where everything blends in. There's a break zone here where everything breaks out. And a good method for doing a reflection that works is heart monitor trace. Straight line kick, straight line kick, like that. Heart monitor trace, not wiggly, wiggly. Oh, we're nearly done. And then I've got to dry it and take off the... The masking. Right. And the fantastic thing is I can't overwork it. I'm, I'm not, I haven't got the time. <laughs> so the next thing is a few crisscross strokes. Masking fluid off. Got to dry it first. Then it's masking fluid off time. A little bit of a... Whew. Right. Masking fluid off. But I've got to dry it first. The painting's done, but I've got to take the masking fluid off. And half the painting is masked. You haven't got another hairdryer, have you? Uh, have you got... I've got, what I've got one in my bag if you want to go and get it. Because I think I'm going to need it. The red bag, there's two hairdryers. And uh, the black one is the best. He's going to get a hairdryer. I'm just going to have to have a look at it in the mirror to see what it's like. Here, I can just do a little bit more so that it, it tells me stuff that is useful. And just here. <laughs> that one's more powerful. Nearly there. We can get the masking off. I'm going to take the masking off the river. Bye bye.
Masking in the sky, done with a rough brush, remember? While I'm drying that, I'm just going to touch back in with dry brush over the twigs and sticks to sort them out, to get them back calmed down a little bit. So I just dry brush over them like that. There we go. The river, let's look at the picture. I can just, again, I can just go round the edges, make sure that all makes sense. That sh probably shouldn't go in that far. Little details like this. Whoa. Now I could think this is dry. That's not still not dry. I'll take the masking off there. So I'm going to do two things now. One, check it in the mirror. Two, take off the tape. Three, after you've seen it on the monitor, the lights are going to go on. And um, I'm going to pick it up and show you. So the mirror just tells me immediately if there's any problem zones which I just need to maybe sort out. Oh, look, that, I mean, there's instant grass, and it's a second. I feel like a right cheat doing that, but I've just, just done that. So, so that's OK. Happy with that. Now I take the tape off. So make sure all the masking's off. Yep. Peel the tape off. That's the tape off. And that's the